Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to discuss appending, replacing, and prepending with HTML. Now, we've previously seen in other videos how we can work with the sister macros to the link macro, link prepend, link replace, and link append. And we've seen when we work with these that we present a link to a reader, they click on the link, and then something happens, the corresponding name of the macro. It is either prepended, replaced, or appended. Now, as we've now seen with working with HTML, we can access that HTML using its corresponding attributes, usually ID, identification, or class classification. Using selectors, we can select that HTML and affect it in some way. Now, when we're discussing these in reference to HTML elements, the things we can do are also those corresponding actions we saw with the sister macros for link. That is, we can also append, replace, and prepend. When we use these particular macros, we are working with their forms outside of their sister forms and link. That is, instead of link prepend, link replace, and link append, we are working with append, prepend, and replace. No link in front of it. When we work with these, we need to work with selectors, we select the corresponding elements, and then affect them in a corresponding way. Before we get too far into looking at examples of how all of these works, and I have prepared passages for appending, replacing, and prepending, we need to talk about a pretty common problem we'll see with macros like this. We need to be made aware that when we work with HTML elements and macros in the same passage, occasionally we will run into an issue called a race condition. In programming terminology, a race condition describes when two or more processes are trying to access the same resources. One wins the race, or sometimes another one wins the race, but they're both competing at the same time. And so what I mean is, when we're working in SugarCube and we're looking at an HTML page in a web browser, the web browser is working on some processes that is working corresponding to the HTML elements that work with the web browser, and there's also JavaScript code that's running within SugarCube that's performing other actions. The race occurs when the JavaScript code, or the SugarCube code if you prefer, is trying to access the browser code that's happening at the same time. And so the two things race each other, and this is a very bad practice. We should avoid it at whenever possible. And the reason we should avoid it is because most of the time the SugarCube stuff will fail because the browser stuff will take priority, and, but sometimes it might succeed. And that's just a bad design to get into. So let's look at a pretty common example of how this error occurs, and then we'll look at some better ways of doing these practices. So I purposely named this passage does not work, and it is a very common thing that happens when working with these particular macros. So it would seem at first glance, that this code right here would work. We could create a corresponding HTML element, give it an attribute, in this case an ID for identification, use its selector form, notice the hash for ID, and of course the period for class or classification. And what we want to do is use the replace macro to replace the content of the corresponding element matching the selector with this right here. The problem is this passage won't work the way we think it does, because when this is working with the web browser and this is working with the SugarCube code, they will race each other most of the time and nearly all of the time. The second line with replace won't work. It will fail and then it will produce an error. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Say no elements match the selector example, which is true. From its perspective, it went to go to work to go look for something and it couldn't find it. And the reason why it couldn't find it is because the browser stuff wasn't done yet. Now in certain situations in much slower computers or much faster computers, it might win some of the time, but this is just generally bad design and we should avoid it whenever possible. So instead, what we'll usually do is we will put some type of interactivity around the corresponding macros. That is, we will use something like link or a number of other options we've now seen with introducing additional interactivity within passages, and that will work in conjunction with the replace, append, or prepend macros. We will do this to prevent this very issue right here. When we go to select things, we want it to exist so we don't produce errors. In order to make sure it exists, we usually hide it beside some type of interactivity. 
Now the reason why we put it inside the interactivity is because the web browser won't allow you to interact with a web page until everything is ready. So by the time it gets to, gets to allowing a reader to interact with a link, everything is ready, so that way we can guarantee it's ready because we can't interact until everything is ready, and so now we see why we arrange things that way. Put in summary, don't do things like this because they will usually not work. They might work some of the times, but you can't guarantee it if other people are reading it on things like mobile devices or in other settings that it will work all of the time. This might work some of the time, like maybe one out of ten, but it's generally extremely bad practice to get into, and it's a pretty common problem we'll see with these macros. So let's look at each of these various operations, appending, replacing, and prepending. And I've got the corresponding examples from the previous video I did on link append, link replace, and link prepend in these same passages so we can see how these two different forms work together. So let's go ahead and look at appending. So previously we saw when the link append macro was introduced, it presents some type of text, something for a reader to click on, and then replaces whatever that link was with the corresponding text. Now, I've created a corresponding form that, at first glance, would appear to work the same way. Except, in this case, it won't work exactly the same way we think it will. It works similarly, but not exact same way. So, in this case right here, you open the drawer and you find the pen. And here I'm using span. Again, span is a number of different inline elements within HTML. And so this means we are defining some type of text or phrases or sentences, something that's less than a paragraph, a span of words. So in this case, I'm enclosing all of this within the link macro. Inside the link macro, I'm putting the append macro. The append macro is looking for a selector that has the ID of desk. Again, using the hash to look for ID or identification. And that is this right here. So the thing it is inside of. When we click on drawer, it will correspondingly replace that or correspondingly append that. So let's go ahead and look at this because this is, won't work the way we think it will, at least not at first glance. So link right here, append, appends the text. Click it here. Appends the text, but notice the link didn't disappear. Appends the text, appends the text, append the sex. Notice these two major differences in its corresponding output. For link append, it will only work one time and then the link will disappear. And the combination of link and append as two different macros, it will keep working because link keeps going until we remove it. And so this can be incredibly powerful depending on what thing we want to happen. If we want to only operate once, link append as a single macro is probably the better choice. If we want it to happen multiple times, then link and then the append macro working together might be the better option. So now let's move over to replace. So we've seen append with link append as a single macro and then link and then append as two different macros. So replacing, again, I have a previous example where when we click on drawer, it would be replaced with this text right here. And I've also set up the same thing here using a span again. Again, inline element working with words or phrases or sentences, something usually less than a paragraph. And let's look at this. Because now that we've got or now that we've seen that is, a different example of working with these combination of macros, our expectations might be a little bit different for replace. However, it works more or less the same. And in fact, the effect is the same because it is replacing the thing that's inside of it. Whereas again, if it's appending, it's adding it to the end and the link macro keeps working, whereas a link append macro only works once. So in this case, working with link replace or link and replace achieves the exact same effect. Now let's look at prepend and then discuss all of these in connection to each other. So prepend, as we might suspect at this point, works the other way that we saw with append. That is, it will keep prepending things. So let's go ahead and play this. Again, link prepend, 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 and keep adding on to the front. So as we've now seen with appending and prepending, 
As long as we're working with the link macro, it will keep working. We can keep appending or prepending. However, when it comes with the replace, it only acts once. So working with link append produces a single effect. Working with link append produces a single effect. But working with link and then append, or link and then prepend, creates multiple effects. This is in contrast to link replace, a single macro, and then link and replace, two different macros working together, that achieve the same effect. But again, in these particular examples, I was working with elements that were around the corresponding macro. Remember, and as we'll see in a future video, we can work with other elements. The key and success, the kind of importance of working with these three particular macros, append, replace, and prepend, is that we can work with any HTML elements as long as we know their corresponding selectors. That is, as long as we can find them within the passage or find them within the larger page, we can work with them. This means, as we'll see in a future video, we can start to replace content in various places as long as we know the corresponding attributes in order to find it. That is, as long as we have the selector in order to select it within the passage or the corresponding page. So this has been an overview of, again, the issue with working with append, replace, and prepend. That is, do not attempt to do something within the same passage. Usually you want to wrap these within some type of interactivity. Again, keeping in mind that the web browser will allow interactivity once it's finished with its presentation of stuff. So we can guarantee we can work with it. It would guarantee that the elements will be available if they are inside some type of interactivity. And then we saw with link append will run one time, link and then append will run multiple times, link replace as a single macro, and then link and replace as two different macros will achieve more or less the same effect. And then link prepend a single macro, and then link and prepend will again keep working. Thanks for watching.